Hi, I'm Michael Laurie, and we're looking at the green roof that I designed and built on my tool shed on Vashon. Uh, I think it was about in 2004. And initially, I put a whole bunch of sedums and some other native plants here. But as you can see in the picture here, it's mostly the sedums that I'm touching here. And then the grapes that we planted on the other side came up mostly just in the last year and uh, have spread out and I think it makes it look kind of nice. And then also the apple tree over the years has grown and come up here. So the whole point of a green roof is that you can capture the rain, slow it down, and it goes through the plants and the soil and it gets filtered. And then as it runs off the roof, you could capture it and put it somewhere. But it, one of the main things it does is slows off rapid runoff of stormwater and rainwater, which can sometimes cause flooding and erosion and problems. This slows it way down. Way slower runoff off this roof than the roof on the house. So to build this green roof also, there were a number of steps be, before the plants, and that was building up the the foundation to be able to handle the greater weight, also build up supports underneath this roof. Uh, we put another layer of plywood on here. Then we put down a pond liner, filter mat, soil, and then the plants came. So I wanted to show you some of the materials we used after we put the second layer of plywood down. We put a pond liner down, not this particular one, but that's a good thing to do, to put the pond liner down to keep moisture away from the building structure. On top of that, we put this drain mat material, which is a common thing used in construction. And the idea here with this filter so not a lot of dirt would get through there, but the moisture would. And this, it's hard to see, but this roof slopes. And so the idea is the water comes through and it slopes down and gets into the gutter over there. Um, and I wanted to just say a couple other things. It's really important in doing a green roof that you, to water the plants. I know of green roofs that all the plants have died because nobody set a system up to be able to water them, at least initially. Initially, I watered about four or five times a year. Then it tapered off to a couple times. I don't think I've watered a single time in the last couple years. I probably will water this weekend because it's getting so hot. The other thing is weeds came in and I had to come up here oh, once or twice a year to do some weeding. But you know what? These sedums and uh, now the grapes are, have crowded out most of the weeds. So if you're lucky, that will happen on your green roof also. Okay, so I'm Diane Emerson. I'm Michael Lurie's wife. And I just wanted to say that I've done the research. The name of this lovely sedum on this is, this is Sedum Angelina. So if you're looking for this exact sedum to put on your green roof, this is the one we've got here. So when you collect the water, then you know a big part of it ideally is you want to think about how am I going to make use of this? And so we're going to, I'm going to show you some of that in a second. But here's uh, some of the lines coming out of the tank to, to get to the watering system. Before we do that, I wanted to point out that you can order or buy a zero pressure timer. Why would you want that? Well, a lot of normal timers, they, uh, they won't work well with a rain barrel because there's not a lot of pressure of the water coming out. These work on low pressure. So you could potentially put a timer there and that way you could get the watering happening and it'll shut off. You can go off and do something else. Okay, so I'm gonna move this valve here to allow uh, watering to occur over here Okay, so this is off. I'm going to open this valve and now we have water going to feed the soaker hose. I'm going to shut that off 
and I'm going to open this other valve and now we have the water going over to feed the slow low pressure drip system. I'm going to open up one of the lines which is going to let water come out of this soaker hose where my finger is. It's coming out very slowly and that's good. That's what you want. You don't want it if you have too much pressure, it would be squirting geysers. You don't want that. And so, you know, this is a soaker hose you could buy at the store. So that's one way you could water your garden with the rainwater. And here's that other watering option. So can you see the water is dripping out of this little emitter? This is a drip system that works off of the really low pressure that you have coming off of a rainwater tank normally. And uh, you can order that from Lee Valley Garden Supply Company in California. You, you're not normally, this is not the normal kind of drip you might find at your store uh, down the road. It's a special, very low pressure system. So here's another rainwater tank. And I'm going to talk a little bit, start with what's inside this tank that has been uh, retrofitted especially well for rainwater use. And you can see on the top there's this screen so that way uh, mosquitoes can't get in and breed in there, which is kind of nice. And you have these big holes to let the water get in. And in here there's a tube you'll uh, see that uh, is the overflow. So in other words, once the tank starts filling up and, and to stop it from overflowing out, you got this little tube that the, the rising water goes into that tube. And then it's coming out, in this case, out right here. What you can do then is direct this line to like over here where there's some arnica and valerian that need a lot of water, that would like a lot of water. And then last time I talked about two different kinds of irrigation for using the water. Another way is just to fill up a pail, just like that. Now uh, we're going to look talk a little bit about the rain garden here. That's a, this is another way to deal with the stormwater on your property. Notice there's two downspouts over here, and they feed down into this gutter that I put in this garden rain garden area, and the the water dumps out here, and then there's two more downspouts in the back here and they feed to another gutter that I put here and the water also comes into this rain garden area and just to give you an idea this rain garden goes all the way all the way over here where I'm waving the stick and so the idea of the rain garden there's a couple things it's it's capturing the water it's slowing it down it's spreading it and it's sinking it and uh, for this to work well, you want to make sure you pick plants that can handle getting pretty wet. So we have maidenhair fern right here, one of our favorite plants. That's a native. We have another native here, Devil's Club, that not too many people would normally want in their garden because of the stickers on it. But it's kind of cool and it's medicinal, so we put it here and a Pacific nine bark, this big shrub here. And honestly, even though this is recommended in some of the rain garden books, I wouldn't do it. Mostly because look how big it gets. It's gonna overwhelm everything else. So you might wanna go with plants that don't, don't get quite so big. Okay, I just wanted to talk about my hat. Plant the rain, what the heck are we talking about here? This is a hat designed by Brad Lancaster from Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. And he's written a lot about the whole idea of rain gardens, like we talked about. <clears throat> and uh, But you can do a whole lot more in what, what I'll call sculpting your garden. 
to guide all of the rainwater to go towards your plants that you want to get water. And that's what he did at his property, and he turned it from this barren desert-looking place to this lush garden. And, you know, just one simple example is like when you plant a plant, you can dig a little basin around it so that when the rain falls, that basin will hold water and help feed that plant you planted instead of running off and going somewhere else. We're here in the forest behind our house on Dashon, and it's kind of a steep slope. And uh, so one of the other solutions to deal with stormwater and runoff on a steep slope is to create a terrace system like I'm touching here. And what's, one of the things that's cool about this is it's, it's very low cost. You pound some sticks into the ground, like these ones here, these upright ones. And notice on the back side, there's more sticks that are pounded in. And we've also made use of a burlap bag. Uh, so, and in this case, we, we, we hammered the sticks on the front through the bag to lock it in place. And then you can just come along and pile sticks between these front upright sticks in the back. And now you've got this pretty stable support and you've got the burlap bag so that when water and soil comes sliding down the hill, this will catch it and stop it and slow it down. Which, and it works really well and low cost. And you know, you can use a little rock to hammer the sticks into the ground. So the only thing you might have to spend money on is to buy a burlap bag for two or three dollars. On this side, you can see that it is steep and it's a little maybe hard to tell from the picture, but there's definitely been water running down the hill and picking up soil. So that's one of the reasons I put this right where it is. Another really beneficial thing in terms of reducing runoff on slopes are sword ferns. You've probably seen them if you've done much hiking on Vashon or other forests in western Washington. They are just fabulous at holding the soil um, and they don't need a lot of supplemental water uh, once they've gotten established. And there's a whole bunch of them here and they're doing a great job of holding on to the slope. And I just wanted to let everyone know that this video is funded by King County's Wastewater Treatment Division in partnership with the Vashon Nature Center and that the content herein does not constitute an endorsement by King County government, its employees, or its elected or appointed officials. Thank you.